The Brazilian Doping Control Laboratory has been working since 1989 uh, for doping control. It was accredited by the IOC in 2002, uh, followed up by the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA accreditation, and it has been accredited by almost, uh, almost 10 years. The doping control laboratory nowadays is mostly based on urine and blood samples. But the creativity of the athletes, one can say, by using doping substances is so great that we need to have at least around 20 different procedures to be able to look after every possibility of doping in use nowadays. Well, the World Anti-Doping Agency published a list of prohibited substances, but it is not encompassing. Any substance that is alike the ones that are listed there, or have biological uh, uh, activities that are similar, they are also immediately prohibited. So the, the wealth of substance that we are tracking down now would be over 500 different molecules. The real uh, analytical process should begin uh, when the sample is collected. The laboratory, the best that it is, would only be able to track down what the sample contains. So it's very important that the collection is done in a proper way, the transportation to the laboratory, and also it's very, very important that the laboratory doesn't know the identity of the athlete. We received actually two bottles, what we call the A bottle and the B bottle. So the B bottle is uh, put under custody of the laboratory and is sealed. The A bottle then is, is opened and it is divided in many different, what we call aliquots, small portions for the analysis. Having to deal with sophisticated instruments, the, the first thing that a laboratory did is a kind of a informal call for the instrument providers. The only one that was able to show that their instruments were fit for the purpose in our own conditions was the Thermo Fisher Group. They have the patent for the mass spectrometer with the orbit trap analyzer, which is really representing a differential in technology nowadays. Of course, for choosing a provider, you, you want not to get the best technology, but you would like also to, to get the best support. So we had a real very special commitment from, from the Thermo Fisher group, so we know that we have their full attention. For the analysis, we have mainly two big uh, instrument setups, one for urine and another one for blood. Uh, if we go for the setup for analysis of urine, then they are majorly based on, on two types of uh, analytical procedures. One of them is called the chromatography and the other one mass spectrometry. In the system that we use now, these two are coupled together. So we have a tandem system and the chromatography part of it just separates the substances that are in the sample. Uh, once you get the substance separated, then the mass spectrometer will have a means to analyze them and try to identify the actual structure that is present in the, in the sample. The chromatography may work in two different ways. It is a, what we call a gas chromatography, where the molecules are separated in in the gas phase, and the liquid chromatography, where they are separated by being pushed through the system by a solvent, a liquid material that just transports the substance within the system. The reason to use two different chromatography methods, the GC and LC, so be in the gaseous phase or in the, in the liquid phase, is not related with the chromatography itself but the way the mass spectrometer will treat the molecule. This makes you have different information concerning the structure of the molecule. And what is really the, the smart thing is that there are molecules that respond better when they are treated by the gaseous phase mode and other ones will respond better in the liquid phase mode. So what you are trying to do is to enhance your detection capability by using the properties of the molecules themselves. Well, there's a very new technology, which is called the Orbitrap, 
which is a specific means of doing this selection and weighting of the molecules. And this Orbitrap has also the ability to work in what we call a high resolution mode, which means that you can have the weight with maybe four, five, six decimal points in exactness. So the, the actual information that the chemist receives is that a specific mass will give specific fragments. And then, as a chemist, you can try to build up from the masses what are the actual initial structure of the molecule. Besides the chromatography mass spectrometers, uh, methods that we need to screen for urine and all the different substances, one way of doping is uh, to use what we call the endogenous substances. So the doping of uh, uh, anabolic steroids, for example, it can try to overcome the control by administering from an exogenous source testosterone, for example, that you produce endogenously. So the, the key point here then is try to differentiate between the endogenous testosterone that you naturally have in your body from the one that you use to upgrade your anabolic ability, let's say. So to do that, you need a different kind of, again, chromatography and mass spectrometry. Uh, and this is uh, gas chromatography coupled to what we call an isotopic ratio mass spectrometer. The use of the GC IRMS for tracking down this exogenous uh, application of endogenous steroids uh, only is applied if you have some suspicion of that practice from your previous analysis by the GC and LCMS for screening purposes. Well, during the Olympic Games, a laboratory will, will receive over 6,000 samples in three weeks. Though this is a challenge, having up to 300, 400 samples coming, coming in to the laboratory one day and having to, to be analyzed and the results delivered in 24 hours. The International Olympic Committee now keeps the samples for 10 years. So you can, if some new technology arises, reanalyze the samples to try to figure out something that was done years before. So this is a, a very good deterrence for the athletes because they know that even if they can maybe bypass the system now, they could be tracked down later in their career. The, the basic doping control analytical technology is, um, in its essence, technology for the analysis of biological material. So any applications uh, which involve any biological system will benefit from that. So this is, was really bringing to the country a higher state of, of knowledge and, and technological development that I'm, I'm really sure will, will really bring benefits for the future.